Hello there. This is Cindy at cindybdesigns.com. Thank you for joining me today. This is the card that we will be making and it's mainly for tips and tricks I use that you can use as well to make gender neutral cards. So to get started, that is what we are looking like and I'll get into the textures and the patterns and everything like that later. Shop my stash and put a lot of our different products together that of course coordinate beautifully. So we have beautiful autumn. Our card base is going to be a top folding landscape five and a quarter or five and a half across by four and a quarter down. That piece of designer series paper is five inches by two and an eighth. That image we'll be using from the beautiful autumn along with our sentiment. Buffalo check background stamp set. I have Forever Fern coming up along with the die cuts. And we're only going to be using one stamp for that and one die cut that I'm pointing to. That little card right there is from April Pump Paper Pumpkin of my wonderful family. And I am going to use that detailed bands frame that I just pointed out right there. And we're going to modify that just a little bit. And then the two largest oval stitch shapes for our sentiment panel and our little buffalo check panel. We also have our stamp pads. I forgot Calypso Coral in there, which is soft sea foam and mint macaron. Woven threads and well done sequins. Memento Tuxedo Black, our detailed trio punch to corner around our edges. That's from Forever Greenery. It's the Just Jade like gingham ribbon from the pack there. And then, you know, various adhesives and of course our Take Your Pick tool. So to get started here, first thing I'm going to do is bring in our corner rounder and round the edges. And you want to get it right in between those two notches there pushed all the way back and now get your corners running quite nicely and I'm going to do the same thing for a piece of designer series paper that is black and white from magic in this night which is our Halloween paper and yeah there's a rose on it but anything black and white designer series paper that's a staple to me and there's a lot in here so you'll be seeing me use this designer series paper on a lot of different projects, even Christmas, even though it's black and white. So I put our stamp and seal on the back of that, or seal plus, and I have that adhered down to our card base now. So we're gonna pick it up a little bit and move on. I'm bringing in the Buffalo Chuck background stamp, and I'm going to ink that up really well with Calypso Coral ink. And that's the only place that this color is used on the card, but it's a strong enough color how it is used to kind of make it pop a little bit. And checks is, is a masculine pattern more so than feminine, although our clothes and handbags and different things are showing that right now. But you can do it both ways. So that is the little leaves from Beautiful Autumn. I'm stamping it off once with soft suede, I'm sorry, soft sea foam, and I blew it on that one image right there. Fortunately, it's going to be covered up, so I'm not stressing too much about that. And now I'm going to bring in our stamp apparatus and the large leaf from Forever Greenery, and that's going to be laid down twice in mint macaron. I have no idea why I'm doing that. Um, I kind of made this on the fly just a little bit, so I was trying to get my sentiment and those two images down on one piece of cardstock there, just to you know keep my waist down a little bit. So you get it down, you want to move it over an inch, and then ink it back up again with mint macaron because we do need two of those. And I'm pressing down a little bit harder just to get it maybe a little bit darker. So I'm bringing in our sentiment, my heart is grateful for you. 
and that is from, again, Beautiful Autumn, and I'm going to lay that down, Memento Tuxedo Black. You always see my pick the, you always see me pick the lid up from the stamp apparatus just to make sure I have everything even on there, but when I'm die cutting out a sentiment, I don't, or punching, I don't worry about it too much, but I still want it as straight as it can possibly be, and I like my sentiments really crisp and bold, so I inked it up again, and that is what we are looking like. Brought in the Big Shot and that card from, not, not necessarily a card, it's just part of the April 2020 Paper Pumpkin, and I'm die cutting that out with a detailed bands frame because I wanted the soft sea foam in there with a white mixed in and that little teeny tiny bit of shaded spruce. You can see it in person a little bit. It does give it a lot of texture. And so I'm taking our dye brush and getting that out there and getting you know the rest of it poked out with my pokey tool. And then I'm going to cut it real quick on the edges there and I'm doing it at a curve just like that as you can see so it looks really cohesive and like I didn't modify it on my end because even though the ends are going to be covered up you know still kind of fussy neat so taking the largest stitched oval die I'm going to die cut out die cut that out from our buffalo check with calypso coral card stuck on there straightening it up a little bit because I want to be able to use the rest of that cardstock for a project later on. And now we're going to take the second largest stitch die and die cut out our sentiment with that. So, since it was smeared, I had to take it off screen, re-stamp it, let it dry. You want to heat set this if you're going to continue to work with it, if you don't give it a chance to dry, because it is archival ink and is permanent, and that way it won't smear on you. And that is what we are looking like. So we're going to move on, and I meant to take that part out, but you know, it didn't happen. That little V down there that I'm pointing to, I said the same thing last week in our video. I line up my die cuts there first, and then go for the top, and then finagle the sides of it, just so I get like a decent cut. The next cut you see me make is off just a teeny tiny bit because I did not line everything up at the bottom like I should have is you'll see when I put the tape on since I'm super zoomed in now and you'll see how it turns out over on the left side of that where I have like a little bit too much white but I'm okay with that so we're going to adhere everything together now and that is how that is going to look on top so the first thing I want to do is grab that leaf image back in that we put on the background there. And this time, time I'm going to stamp it out in full strength with soft sea foam. I didn't want to do the mint macaron because we have a lot of it in there and there's large leaves already. So I'm taking our liquid adhesive. I'm going to lay that down on the front of our detailed band die there. Center it up, top to bottom, left to right. Give that a nice press. Set it aside to let it, you know, set up. And I do know that I want to run our Just Jade Gingham ribbon through the center of that. So I'm not going to put any Stampin' Dimensionals through the center of our oval die cut. We're just going to put them on the edges there. Lots of dimension and texture to this card that you saw me flip the card a couple minutes ago to the side and so I'm thinking okay I have to do a bow on screen not good and I start to tie it a little bit put adhesive down to help keep it down on the back a little bit flip it back over start to lay down our sentiment panels like wait a second that ribbon needs to go on top. That's where I figured it out. Luckily I was able to pull that top back off real easy because we're going to cover our adhesive up anyway. So that little notch you just saw me point to 
you want to put both of them on the left and right, right around the magic in the air card uh, designer series paper. Just keep it all lined up. So now I put down the adhesive on top. I'm going to get that straightened out a little bit and then end up tying my bow. And I mess with this and mess with this and mess with this. First, it comes in upside down, which is really frustrating. And you're going to see that right here. And I'm thinking, okay, I got to fix this. And that didn't work. So then I untie it. Flip the card stock around a little bit to have better luck. Because normally I have to do it upside down. And I think I pull it out again. I do. I do. So then, you know, hopefully the third time is a charm, but it's not going to be. So right in the middle of it all, when I figure out, okay, I'm going to tie everything upside down again, I'm putting a glue dot underneath there to help me out a little bit, which, which I do a lot. So I'm going to slow this down to show you what I did because it's, it's a total hack. It's a fluke. I have no idea what made me think as I was doing this. So again, bow is upside down. I do not want to go for a fourth. I flip the bow just like that. You turn it over, but look at the center of that knot. And you'll want to grab your pokey tool and like straighten it out over on the right-hand side just a little bit. But I have like the perfect center of a bow without using a tool or anything like that. So I'm taking the end of you know, the pokey tool, getting those bows really crisp like, and I know it's not looking really good right now over towards the left, but my focus again is on the bow on the right. And that is how it turned out. And I will end up fixing that line there as you see, because it's a little bit wonky and granted it is going to be covered up with a sentiment. It's going to bug me because I, I know how neurotic I am with stuff like that. So trimming the bow up, getting that lined up, moving it up a little bit, adjusting that glue dot underneath there, and I had to put another one. But I, I think that bow turned out great, and I will definitely remember that little accidental hack for the next time around. So I'm pulling off the back to the dimensionals, and I'm going to center that up top to bottom, left to right, and there's our sentiment. The die cut ferns I'm bringing in, and I, 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 I'm testing it out because I do want them on dimensionals, and part of it's going to go on that sentiment oval, so that I want to tack down with our liquid adhesive, and then I'm adding stamp of dimensionals. Are those minis? Yeah, they are minis. Over on the right side, or actually the yeah, the right side of that fern there. And so the glue goes on top of that sentiment and then the dimensionals raise the rest up because I do have that on stamp of dimensionals, that, that very top layer, not layer, but our sentiment panel. And so I did the same thing to that fern there and I've been talking for like 12 minutes straight now, and it's really hard for me to do that when there's nobody around. So, peeling out the dimensionals on the back of that, I'm gonna tuck it underneath our ribbon. And we are getting there. We're into the home stretch now. I have two different types of sequins there. On the left, we have the whale done, and on the right, we have woven thread. And I wanna grab from the woven thread, the more metallic, like the metallic bluish kind of sequins, and then from the whale done, more so of like the pool party sequins. And there's no pool party in this card or any colors from the woven thread sequins, but it all coordinates beautifully together because that's just how our products and colors work. So I'm using the pokey tool and the take your pick tool and I'm laying down our sequins, you know, it looks like surgery a little bit. And there's going to be five of them, you know, for that rule of odds. 
So the key for you to make gender neutral cards is we have the black and the gray in the DSP. We have the Calypso Coral with the more masculine buffalo check pattern. And then we have a neutral that's not white or vanilla of the greens. And we have three of those colors. We have the Just Jade Ribbon in the gingham. Our ferns are stamped with mint macaron. And we have more of soft sea foam in there that I use to stamp off um, the white card stock. And then the sequins, so there's like, you know, that are blue and turquoise, like a pool party. When you pull it all together, you have something that's going to catch the eye of, you know, men and women. And it works out. So that is the key to making a gender neutral card. We have great texture, great dimension on there. So I hope that you enjoyed today's project. Please hit like and subscribe. If you want one of my spare cards, leave me a comment. If you're out of the country, I can still send it to you. It's really inexpensive, $1.15. And I will see you on Tuesday for another gender neutral project. So have a great weekend and I hope that you join me.